Welcome amidst the aftermath of the Court of Appeals' decision to overturn the Plateau State governorship election in favor of the Upper Aggressives Congress. A video surfaces on social media where uh, Yusuf Gagdi, a House of Representatives member, boasts about the party's influence on the impending Supreme Court ruling, of course. Uh, the P Plateau State governor is heading to the Supreme Court to appeal the uh, ruling of the Court of Appeal. Now, his statement sparked outrage and raised questions about the fairness and integrity of the judiciary and the polit political processes in Nigeria. Well, social media users expressed dismay, highlighting concerns about justice being determined by affiliations rather than evidence. Now, this controversy has drawn attention to the broader issues surrounding the judiciary's independence and transparency in Nigeria's political sphere. Well, tonight we have our guests uh, to do uh, justice to this uh, particular conversation. Uh, we would like to welcome at this point Mohamed Saido Etsu, his uh, former uh, national chairmanship aspirant of the All Progressives Congress. Mohamed, good evening and thank you very much for your time. Good evening, how are you? Oh, All right, fantastic. Uh, um, well, you, you, I, I would like to believe you saw um, the footage, that viral video of um, Yusuf Gagdi on a campaign stage bragging uh, that we are going to the Supreme Court. Uh, we'll, they will sh we'll show them who we know and let them show us who they know. Um, what's your response as a member of the All Progressives Congress, as a politician in Nigeria, to what Yusuf Gagdi said? Thank you very much. I think um, the Nigerians should look at uh, the situation on ground, and uh, the judiciary itself has been put on test with the recent judgments in Plateau and Kano and uh, Zamfara State. Um, the political actors, both uh, the ruling parties and the opposition parties, have um, put the uh, judiciary on trial especially our deliberate Indian students. The way that uh, we are going, dangerous for our for, for political gains that we've achieved in some uh, 20 years ago. And uh, with recent judgment, even though we have a lot of judgment, which has uh, upturned some elections uh, before, and it doesn't cost an umpire with the recent uh, judgment that is happening across the country. But uh, the statement credited to Yusuf Gagdi, I think is, um, uh, let me say, it's coming both from the PDP and addition out the firebrand, I'm thinking that go, and I'm the bet. But uh, people shouldn't now look at this statement and think it can change anything. What is happening in Plateau State, we should look at the background of the case, right from the tribunal up to the appeal court. And even from, it's a pre-election matter, because it's an inter-party affairs which has permitted up to the post-election where we are in now. PDP have a rough congresses, which the court have suspended the congresses held by functional groups of the party in the state. But because of um, confidence they have and thinking that nothing will happen, they go ahead by filling candidates. And if you look at it, what's happening in the last few weeks, some of the lawmakers have lost their seats because some of the cases stop at the uh, appeal court. And even some state assembly members are losing their seats because of their negligence and uh, not taking our judiciary serious. But now they are putting the blames on the bench, not knowing that the political actors, especially from the PDP angle, they should have put their house in order before we got to this level. But now, the political actors or players must be careful with their utterances because right now we are at the crossroads where our 
democracy is a trial where everybody feels that it's a do or die affair to win an election. Now, there is a loophole where APC feels that they can be able to cash in and they are getting it through the judicial uh, process. Right. Where PDP fails to put it out in order and APC are cashing on that. Now, the statement credited to the member of the press is unfortunate, even though I believe that it didn't mean that, but because of the kind of uh, firebrand that is happening in the plot, you see, it forced him to, for all the kind of enthusiasm, or feels that uh, everything goes, he makes a statement, and I believe he himself will not make that statement with that kind of uh, utterances coming out from uh, uh, senior members of the uh, Green Chamber. All right. Um, 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 how how damaging uh, is is what Gagdi said um, regarding the Supreme Court's judgments? You know, as far as public perception, uh, the image of the Supreme Court is concerned, because it sounded so uh, so confident. Um, how does this, you know, put a spotlight on the nation's Supreme Court and then the fairness or the perception of fairness and justice? The Nigerians expect from such a court. That's what I'm saying. At the first, I said our judiciary has been put on trial with a recent judgment. And the political actors who will down the tension or who will be able to keep quiet and look at what would come out of the court based on the facts and figure you put out on the table for the uh, bench so that they can be able to fine tune and get actually what is happening. But our politicians are going ahead before even the Supreme Court judges to make statements, which is very unfair to them, and which is very dangerous to our democracy, and even dangerous to our present situation we are. We are at a fragile state where both the ruling party and the oppositions are Getting, they are putting the political space on tense, where I feel that we need to come back to our drawing table and give a judiciary more confidence to deliver their justice. Because right now, anything that happened, now a lot of Nigerians will now feel that our judiciary has been compromised, which shouldn't be so, because the judiciary is the last hope of common man. But when a senior member of a party or a camp or a legislator coming out and bringing out those statements is uh, giving us uh, danger ahead. All right. And I believe Interesting. they won't work with the sentiment or they work with the part on the table. Mohammed, when you say danger ahead, what do you what do you suspect? What are you afraid of? What do you fear lies ahead? Are you talking about the judiciary? Are you talking about Nigerian politics? Are you talking about the country in general? Yes, I'm talking about the country first, because anything that we do as a politicians, we must put the country first. Mm. Because so so what, what is the danger? What is the danger you you are referring to? The danger I'm referring to is people will resort to self-help because they will be they will feel that the democracy, the, 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 the judiciary has been compromised with a statement by our political actor. And that's why we must be careful the kind of things we chunk out now so that we can have confidence on the judiciary of government, because it's the last hope of common man. And we now we are heading to Supreme Court, where anything that happens there, it's final. You know, now we must be careful, because any statement we make at this critical time will pose dangerous to us, because uh, the, both the ruling party and the opposition must be careful to, to, to protect the sanctity of our uh, Judiciary system. Hmm. Um, in in light of Gagdi's statement, you know, we'll go to Supreme Court and we'll know who they know, and uh, they will show us who they know. We, they will know who we know. Um, what measures can be taken to uphold the sanctity of the judiciary in Nigeria? What can be done? What measures can be taken to protect the sanctity of the judiciary and also to prevent political interference in the judicial process? Or is it? Um, I think. We yeah. Please. I think the country have a leader rule, and we have an enforcer of this law. And uh, the our security agents need to do a lot of things to 
Because at the end of the day, uh, Mohammed, it would have would not be there. possible. Mohammed, sorry to interject, but but that's you, you and I know that won't happen because the security guys are at the beck and call of uh, the political actors. It, they it will happen. It will happen because if you look at what situation the scenario is happening in Kano. Now the commissioner of police called both key players, both APC and NNPP, in the last uh, the last uh, few days and call them to call their supporters in order so that we can have a panel first before we could talk of uh, a governor. Exactly that's what will happen to the nation. Our law enforcement officers, most surely the inspector general of police, need to talk to our politicians so that they will be careful with kind of their utterances so that they won't put our fragile democracy in dangerous position. But Mohammed, Mohammed, we don't even, I'm sure Nigerians will be thanking God that uh... Gagdi even made this statement. Is it about being careful about the utterances, or is it about the politicians, what they are doing behind the scenes to influence uh, judicial outcomes? That's not true. If you look at some kind of statement, it's just some people make vulgar statement just to, to, to show the kind of uh, firebrand or the kind of uh, power they have, which is not true. Because these are, uh, uh, these are serious people. Before you become a Supreme Court judge, you must go through a lot of uh, you must go through a lot of um, trial, and people are there are people with high state of integrity. Now, when people make such statements, that's why I said they are putting the democracy in danger in the sense that anything that happens at the end of the day, it bounces back to the integrity of this uh, uh, Supreme Court judges that we have or the bench entirely, and. The political players, some of them don't even have anything close to these people, but they make most of statements just to impress their followers or make um, uh, people feel that they have what it takes to obtain justice, which is not true. Some of these things are just the figment of imagination. But now we as a nation, we must be careful with this kind of thing that is happening at the political stage now. Uh, 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 Mohammed, I, I want you to be very clear for us tonight. Are you saying that Gagdi was just um, saying what does not exist? Or are you saying that Gagdi was saying what he knows, but he shouldn't have said it? It doesn't exist. I, I can affirmatively tell you that I have someone that I have a family relative that is close to a Supreme Court judge. In fact, even a family member, before he gets his house, he must make, uh, he must get an order or he must get a permission before his family member, a senior family member, he must get a permission before he even see him. And they are the kind of people that are living in isolation. I don't know where some of them make statements like this and there's no fact to even fact, and there's no anything really related to that. Now, that's why I said they are putting the, the fragile democracy in danger because of this kind of statement. Some of them are not even close to this kind of thing. Gagne will just say it just because he wants to show that they have what it takes to obtain it, which is, which is not true. Okay, so you're saying it is impossible for a, a judge of the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeal or the High Court to be influenced by any politician like Gagne is saying? I, I don't know of the High Court judges, but I can affirmatively tell you Supreme Court judges are likely to be bright or pushed to the corner or corner to make some favorite uh, ju uh, judgments. I don't believe that. But I can't say for the high court judges because we have a lot of people, we have a lot of uh, high court judges that have been put on trial based on kind of uh, illegality that happens in their, in, their, in, their, in their courts and based on kind of things that happen. But in the Supreme Court where you have 11, presently we have 11 justices, it's hard because how can you even penetrate them? How do you get to them? Some of them are up to 70, getting to 70 years of age. What are you going to entice them with? Hmm. Okay. It's not uh, unfortunate how a National Assembly member can make a vulgar statement in the public which doesn't exist. All right. Um, I want you to, to link the um, uh, uh, this to what the President of the Court of Appeal uh, uh, Milord the Honorable Justice Monica Domba Mensem did say uh, yesterday or so uh, that uh, politicians have been putting pressure on her 
you know, trying to persuade her during the presidential tribunal in particular, and that sometimes she has to rush from the court to her office. She has to rush from her office to the court because along the way some politician will meet her uh, to try and put uh, president uh, pressure on her. And she says this was one of the reasons why she moved uh, the appeals to Abuja and Lagos, just so that she could secure uh, judges from undue influence. And she says politicians uh, are putting pressure on them. Do you feel that maybe in, in some instances it's possible that this pressure, uh, the judges will give in to the pressure? That's what I'm saying. Because they're human you beings. Can try, but you can, yeah, some of them you try, but you can't succeed. Because there are people... No, Mohammed, Mohammed, Mohammed I, want, I want you to come out and talk to me so I can understand you. You're being diplomatic, and uh, I want you to put that diplomacy aside and no, tell me I'm trying to your tell mind. You. I'm asking you, uh, 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 the president of the Court of Appeal has said politicians try to put her under pressure and put justices of the Court of Appeal under pressure during the presidential election. Now I'm saying, is it possible that because some of these judges are human beings, they may give in to some, into the pressure? I'm asking, is it possible? Uh, you know, there are people of integrity, and that's why she comes out and tells you what actually is happening. But they can't buy to that idea. And that's why she's looking for alternatives to make sure that she doesn't attach herself to these kind of things. You know, they are human beings. A lot of things will come up, but I know very well they work with facts and figures. No, but Mohammed, I'm saying, I'm, I, so I just, a, a simple answer will suffice. Is it possible, based on what Justice uh, 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 Dongba Mesem uh, said, Monica Dongba Mesem, uh, is it possible that the pressure she said that politicians were applying on her during the presidential election, she didn't say which of APC, PDP, LP, and then the other party, which I can't quite remember. Well, let's set them aside because they would do their case. Um, well, she doesn't tell us which of the party's officials did that. But I'm saying since she's already said that they meet them to apply pressure, they have access to them because you can't apply pressure on whom you don't have access to. So for her to say that they apply pressure on the justices, or the judges, then it means that they have access. So I'm saying, is it possible that maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five of the justices could, could, is it possible that they could give into the pressure because they are human beings? You, you know, know, some people, some people come with some I pressure. Can't you, let, let me be frank with you. They are human beings, and you know, in a judgment, Socially, the appeal court judgment, there are three members of a panel, it seems that. If one binds it and the majority carries the weight, it's not possible. But I'm telling you, these are people of integrity and they are people that are wants to preserve the constitution of Nigeria. So are you saying and that it is impossible for the judges or just judges, you know, of the Court of Appeal, for instance, uh, in the case of what Monica, Melodium Justice Monica, uh, uh, um, Mensem is saying, you're saying it's impossible for them to buckle into the pressure, not even one of them to buckle into the pressure. I'm not saying, I'm just you know, asking. In fact, let me come out clearly and tell you that it's quite unfortunate the, these uh, reverend people find themselves in this situation because of our political pressure and political interest. I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart that these are people of integrity and they won't jeopardize their, the, the, the country interest because of an individual. I'm telling you, we are in a serious situation in this country where the justices have been put on trial. With the statement from the President Court of Appeal, it's ensured that they are pressure, but they can't buy in into that kind of pressure because the, there is a lot of things that is on the ground. You must present your case, and they must work with the facts and figure out the case. Hmm. Okay, Maybe so... So, so how does this, how does what you're saying, uh, uh, you know, ha let's juxtapose it with what uh, has been going on in Kano State. And I'm just going to go through, and I know you're aware of what's been going on in Kano State, where the, um, when the NNPP, uh, which is one of the parties in the Kano governorship um, election petition, the, the defendant, when they requested and laid their hands on the certified true copy of uh, the uh, court of Appeal decision that threw out uh, uh, the governor there, the NNPP governor there, they said that that certified true copy 
um, was different from the judgment that was delivered in court. And they, talking about the NNPP, they have uh, uh, they've dragged the judge uh, to court, to the NJC, sorry, over the tribunal judgment. Um, and of course, they're also talking about the uh, uncomplimentary comments. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to get to the right uh, to the right story. But yes, so they're talking about the contradictions faced by the party in that case. I'm going to read something from that judgment. Um, the CTC, you see in some part of that CTC, it says... In the circumstances, I resolved that all the issues in favor of the appellant, that's because the NPP was the appellant, against the first respondent, that is the APC candidate. APC. Um, I find no merit in this appeal, which is liable, uh, um, in this appeal, which is liable to be and is hereby dismissed. Okay, that's the appeal that the APC took to the, um, the, the, court, the, the tribunal, uh -huh, which was... Um, accepted and then he now took it to the so that's what he's talking about um, and indeed he went uh, ahead to grant them um, he says the judgment of the tribunal in petition blah 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 delivered is hereby set aside so he set that aside but what we had was different so I want you to tell me more about this uh, integrity you're talking about because the NMPP does not see it they're saying they're not seeing that integrity and they've dragged uh, this judge to the National Judicial Council, begging the NJC to help them unravel the mystery and contradictions, you know, therein. That kind of judgment, in fact, is a quite unfortunate, and that's what brought the last statement I said: the judiciary and the trial. The judgment and the certified two copy given to the um, NNPP and both parties. There is discrepancies in that last paragraph, which I think maybe is a typographical error or something deliberate to cause a commotion within the ranks of a judiciary and the system and time. But, because but, but, right but, but, now, but uh, Mohammed, Mohammed, when it comes to judgments, you can't have typographical errors. That, that then would be a big stain on the intake because, because Mohammed, if you look at it, if you look at that judgment, Mohammed, the, the judge signs. So how, how can we have a typographical error on, on a legal document? Mohammed, are you listening to yourself? A, a judgment that is, that, that, that the CTC is a legal, legally binding document. And we're talking about typographical I, error? I read a statement by one of the lawyers telling the NMPP candidate, uh, the NMPP governor of um, uh, the governor of Kano State, that they shouldn't relent by not going to the Supreme Court, thinking that that judgment is uh, it's what is in their favor. It's not in their favor because there are some things in the law that I can't just figure it now that happen sometimes in. In, uh, in, in, in certified through copy or in the written judgment that they shouldn't take for granted. But fine, they have taken it to NJC to go and see how they will call the judges to order, find exactly what happened during that judgment. But it's unfortunate that it's happened on this dangerous time we are living. Right now, Kano is a very sensitive place that we shouldn't take lightly in times of our political and in terms of uh, governance. Right now, what is happening, I think the Supreme Court needs to sit down and do justice to that judgment because what is happening, I told you earlier on that the judiciary has already been put on trial, but they must do everything possible to make sure that they come up clean in the Supreme Court and the judgment right. okay. is sound. Mohammed, so, so you're saying that this... Um... I mean, let's, we can even go down memory lane to what uh, Senator Bokachua said on the floor of the Senate, the last Senate before this one. We're all aware, you're aware. His wife is a judge. He's a politician, a member of the All Progressives Congress. He said that his wife was favorable to him and that his colleagues, when they came to him, he took them to his wife, that she gave them favorable judgments. And uh, it took the intervention of the then Senate president to prevents him from revealing more 
you know, God works in mysterious ways. Now, you were saying that all of this smoke does not have any fire. Um, because because there's something about patterns. That's number one. Number two, number two, number two, just, just before, you, before you answer, the patterns of, uh, uh, you know, conflicting judgments from courts of both superior and uh, lower and coordinate jurisdiction, conflicting judgments. Uh, for instance, you have a judge of a Supreme Court, of a Court of Appeals, saying in one instance, that a matter concerning the qualification of a candidate uh, as one of the grounds of petition is a pre-election matter. And in another case with a similar uh, situation, the same court says um, it's going to deliver a judgment and accept that, that issue that they didn't allow in the f uh, first petition. Now, uh, these inconsistencies are giving people a lot of questions about the judiciary. Now, you're seeing these patterns. There's no smoke without fire. You're not even calling on the National Judicial Commission or Council to look inwards um, and, and look, do some soul searching to see if there's anything that needs to be done. Um, you're not even taking into account what the retired justice who recently gave a valedictory speech said about his profession, that he's been in for years, Mohammed. Yes, and let me also bring you back to memory lane of what Blue Tattoo has said, and he retrieved that statement back because he knows that that statement is grievous and it's an offensive. And, you know, people don't just call to make statements anyhow. And that's why I said, him, that day, himself need to call to other by the security agents because you can't just make a statement without facts or facts and figure added to it. Now, he made a statement that politicians talk to him to see how he can be able to persuade him. Who are they? Who are those people? You must bring them out. You must mention their names. Because you can't just make a statement just because, because they feel like making a statement and at the end of the day you dump it there. Because anything that you said, you will count on you. All right. So you, so you, you want evidence before you believe uh, that Boko Chua was not lying. So how about Justice, uh, um, uh, uh, what was his name again, Justice Datijo? Um, what sort of things he said that judiciary is now something else? Um, I mean, I could go on and on and on. He accused uh, the Chief Justice of abusing the powers of his office. And the man spent 47 years in active judicial service, bowing out at the age of 70, which is the retirement age. And um, he, in his valedictory speech, addressed what he called the uh, rot that he observed in Nigeria's judiciary, which he says has continued to affect the justice delivery system. And are you also going to question Boko um, Dati Joe's, um, uh, you know, aptitude to say maybe he didn't know what he was talking about. Maybe age I, caught, no, caught on with him. I was there at the validity session of um, Justice uh, Musa Dati Joe, and uh, he was caught out of context because the statement that he made is about the gap in the, the, the filling of the gaps of uh, the Supreme Court judges, that, uh, justices that we have at the higher court, where there are some regions of the country are not well represented in the apex court. And the chief justice need to do something quickly so that we shouldn't have issue of doubt or issue that will put our judiciary into question. Those are the statements. But people feel that you just make a vulgar statement indicting the entire judiciary uh, processes, which is not true. What he's saying is that there are a lot of vacancies that are not being filled. At least the chief justice need to make sure that those vacancies are filled so that all some part or the section of the country must feel represented at the apex court. That's one of what that's some of what he said. But um, uh, moving on because we're out of time. Um, what? you know, needs to be done to restore uh, trust in the judiciary. Are you looking at, um, at Dagdi, probably, uh, Gagdi rather, probably been arrested or invited by the DSS because since they're used to doing that, um, to answer questions regarding this? Because it's talked about the security agencies being involved. Do you, uh, would you like to see that? Um, to yeah, tell the, the security of what, what well. he knows? about what he's saying. I think it's, 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 very, it's very good for us 
as a nation when people uh, people should be punished for, for, for wrongdoing. And it's going to help us so that we can be able to strengthen some facts and figures. What, what is happening now, we shouldn't allow people who just feel because they have an uh, instrument of power to be making statements that will jeopardize the entire uh, democratic uh, practice that we are, we are in uh, in the country. Uh, the security agents must be up and doing, and the key political players must be careful and mindful of their utterances so that we must protect not the democracy itself, but the entire country. We are right. right now in a threshold where everybody feels that the best way to win an election is either by hook or crook. And we shouldn't be so. We have a way of getting ourselves elected into power, and that should be followed so that we can be able to have a smooth democratic process. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Mohamed Saidu Etu, a former a national chairmanship aspirant of the All Progressives Congress, thank you very much for your time.